Welcome again to another LumaFusion tutorial. This time I'd like to talk about the workflow I use to compile a timeline, and how it helps me to not only plan a video, but also allows me to focus on the finer editing details sooner. So let's begin. Some videos may showcase footage from a day out or a specific event, whilst others tell more of a story. It can be tempting to throw all your footage onto the timeline and work through it. But this can create an issue in itself as the footage may come from different sources, not follow a specific order, or it might be high resolution and large file sizes. By thinking of the timeline as the mid to end stage of the editing process, and the preview window as the planning and first stage, it will not only help you structure your videos better when making your initial edits, but also reducing the amount of media you download to your timeline. The preview window is not only a visual representation of your media or transition effects, it also allows you to pre-edit, and select only the footage you want to make it to your timeline. So on the right is the source window. I'm using clips that are stored within photos. After selecting a clip a preview can be seen in the left window. From here you can press the information icon to see details about the clip such as frame rate. This is important if you wish to slow any footage down. I'll be covering more about frame rates in a separate video. The preview window has its own timeline. At each end there is a mark in and mark out point shown as yellow brackets. These are the points that define what part of the specific clip will be added to the main timeline. You can tap on the preview to start or stop playing the clip, or you can press and hold on the timeline to scrub quickly up and down. The white line marks the point you are seeing in the clip. After finding the start point of the clip I'd like to make more minor adjustments. I can do this by either swiping left or right on the preview window to move one frame at a time, or by pressing and holding down the play icon. This allows you to move the track marker in increments such as 1 frame, 5 frames, 15 frames etc. After I'm happy with its location, I can press the marking an icon or simply swipe down on the preview window. This has now defined the start point of the clip. Press play, tap the preview or scrub along to find the end point of your clip, then make minor adjustments as before. When you are happy, press the marking out icon, or this time swipe up to define the end point of the clip. You can load the selected clip onto the timeline by pressing the insert clip icon. This will however insert the clip, at the point the main timeline marker is placed, and cut any clips to make room. I prefer to press and hold on the clip, drag it down, and position it on the timeline manually. If you have already edited your timeline but are looking to fill a set duration with a clip, you can drag the marking out point until it's the length you need. Then by pressing and holding between the marker points you can move this around as a fixed duration segment until you are happy. You can then press and hold and drag it down onto your main timeline as before. In the preview window you can also swipe with two fingers to the left, or to the right. This moves to the next or previous clip in your library. When doing this the marking in and out points for any clips are retained. You can also double tap on the preview window to enter full screen mode. This has the same functionality as the smaller preview window does. That's it for this video. I hope you found some tips to add to your own workflow. Please leave me a comment with what you'd like me to cover in future videos. 